On today's show, we'll be looking at how to configure your Epifan X2. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily show every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, here on YouTube about photography and video and all things related. Except that I'm kind of lying to you because today's not actually live. This is a show that is pre-recorded and released at the live time on a day when I'm not able to go live because I'm on vacation. I'm in Sweden or on my way to Sweden or on my way somewhere else on the journey to Sweden. I, I'm not available to go live right now. So that's why this pre-recorded show is being released for you right now. So today we're talking about the X2 and how to configure it. When we did a whole live broadcast around the X2 and I wanted to show the configuration setup for it, I realized that I actually wasn't set up to do that. I couldn't really show it properly. So Ryan kind of pointed his camera at my Atomos display that was showing the output from the Epif it just It didn't, it was not good. So I want to show you now what you can and can't do inside of the interface on here, which I think is quite useful to be able to see. Now, first of all, let's just take a quick look at the device itself. This is the Webcaster X2 from Epifan. If you aren't yet familiar with it, if this is the first video you're watching on it, this is a hardware streaming device, which means that this is dedicated to streaming video to either YouTube or Facebook. If you're familiar with the Webcaster X1, this is the second generation of that. And the X1, you had to buy a separate one for YouTube or Facebook. With the X2, it does both in one. So this is an all-in-one unit, if you will. It has a variety of ports on it, so let's just take a look at what we do have on here. So going to the side, first thing you'll notice is this big old honking antenna. So this does have Wi-Fi on it. If you are going to connect to your network via Wi-Fi, you got a nice big antenna to do it. If you're not using Wi-Fi, you can actually just take this off, so that's nice to have on there. This button on here is a supposedly a power button, although whenever I power it off, it just comes right back on again, but it does allow you to start and stop your show. Now. That's great in the sense that you can then use this headless. Once it's completely configured, you can plug in a camera, assuming that it connects to your network, just hit that button to go. But I don't know that I would ever recommend using this totally headless. I think having a display to connect to it, to check your settings, check your streams uh, status, make sure that it's connected to the right stream, make sure that everything is in place is a good idea. And in that case, I would actually recommend starting and stopping the show from within the software. Because what I did find, the one time that I used it, when I pushed the button to stop the show, it just stopped it. That was it. There was no warning, no, are you sure you want to? It just, boom, was gone. Now, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I double clicked it, but I would certainly recommend avoiding that button until you are 100% confident that you know what's going to happen when you push it. And for that, I'm going to tell you, say that you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. All right, let's get back to the device here. So going to the back side of that, we have our DC power port. So this is plugged into the wall right now. You can apparently run this thing off of a battery. So if you have some type of a power port pack type of a thing, you can run it off of that. That means that you will have a uh, some other cable. You have to find the right cabling to go from that power pack into here, but it is designed so that you can do that. So if you want to take this on the road, you can, but otherwise it does need to be plugged in. It does not have a built-in battery. Next up, we have the optical port. Now the optical port is not currently being used. There are a couple things on here that are not yet in use and may come on a future update, but for now that is, there, there we go, that is not being used. HDMI out. This is how you are going to see the display that I'm about to show you. So that's how you see the interface. And if you ever want to configure your X2, which you're going to want to do, you need to hook up an external monitor. Now that can just be a regular old HDMI television. If you have an HDMI converter to view an HDMI signal on your computer, you could do that as well. So if you're traveling, trying to travel light and you want to have a way to do that, you could look into a HDMI to USB adapter. Um, Epifan makes them. There's third parties that make them as well. Or if you're in a hotel, you can plug into your TV there. Or if you're at home, plug in your TV, wherever you might be. But you need some type of a monitor to plug it into. If you have, uh, if you're a filmmaker and you have an Atomos Ninja product or one of those, you could plug into that as well. A lot of different ways. But point is, you do have to connect this to an external monitor to be able to set up the setup. You got to be able to get to the menu through that. The second part of that is you need a mouse on there. We'll come to that in a moment when we come around to the other side. We look at the USB ports. Next up, we do have two USB ports here, which are both active. I'm not actually using either one of them, but those are both active. And then the LAN ports, if you want to plug in an Ethernet connection, which I, of course, would highly recommend. If you're doing streaming, being on wireless is a little bit sketchy. If you have a really good wireless signal, this does have a really nice big antenna. Odds are you're going to be fine, but yeah, trust me from someone who does this a lot, if you can go wired, go wired. Plug into an Ethernet jack. It's just, it just removes one of the possible problems. When it comes to live streaming, there are way too many variables to risk it. If you can go tethered, if you can go wired, please do. So that's what that LAN port is for. 
I'm not actually connected to the network right now because we're not streaming from this device, so it doesn't matter, but that's where it would be. Next up, rotating the device around to the other side, you'll see we have our HDMI in. Now, this is, of course, where your signal comes in that you're going to broadcast. So whatever camera or your switcher or whatever is going to feed into that. The reason that I don't have anything plugged into it right now is because I'm going to be showing you the interface from this. And if I was plugging in and then going back out to the interface, it would loop and we would very quickly get an infinite feedback loop that wouldn't work. So there's nothing there. So when we switch to the interface on this, you're going to see a big blank screen where the picture should be, but that's where the picture would come in. So HDMI input, that is, of course, is something you're going to be using if you're going to be streaming with this. Next to that, we have another USB port. This USB port is the one that I'm currently using. And you'll notice what's in there is a teeny tiny little adapter. What the heck is that? Well, remember I said that you need a mouse to use this thing. If you have a wired mouse, you can plug that in. But uh, honestly, could you buy a wired mouse today? So what I bought a while ago was just a really cheap Radio Shack wireless mouse. It's not Bluetooth, it's, I don't know, radio, whatever. It comes with this little tiny transmitter, so you plug that into your computer, or in this case, plug that into the X2, and it works fine. And then this mouse connects to it just beautifully. So that's what I would recommend. Wired Tech, who wants that? This is a pretty good, cheap, easy way to go. I think this thing costs less than 20 bucks. Really cheap mouse from Radio Shack. Believe me, it's no good, but it gets the job done. So there's that, and then next to that we have a micro SD port. Now that is also not currently in use, but through a future firmware update it should be, which in theory will allow us to record the show locally. This is really important. If you're doing a live show, you want a local backup. You want to be able to record your show locally so that if something happens, on the way to your live stream, whether it gets interrupted or you lose your internet connection or there's just stuttering because, I don't know, your bandwidth went to hell, whatever it might be, having that local copy as a backup is pretty important. So I'm looking forward to that being activated on here. Being able to record your show locally is a really important feature. And then the last thing we have on here, well, two more things. There's a recovery, let's switch to the right one. There's a recovery hole right there. So you can just push that to do a full master reset. And then an AV port. The AV port is also not currently active, but along with the micro SD port and the optical port, that will be coming online in a future update. On the front, you have a little bit of a status display. This light tells you that it's on. And there is, it's actually really, really hard to see, but there is a message in there. Right now it says, you, uh, HDMI in, no signal. And if I was offline, it would say offline. Uh, I think it does actually light up once you start actively using it. But that is a status display on there that you can look at. Although, frankly, it's not a whole lot of communication. I think most of your communication you're going to want to do through the interface. So speaking of the interface, let's take a look at that. Here's what we see. So there you go. You got the mouse moving around. You can see that I am connected that way. This here would be our signal showing whatever's coming in. If I click on the logo, the YouTube logo, anything like that, all the UI disappears and I'm left with just my signal. So you can do that at any time. That also will include the comments that could be flying by on the screen. Starting up at the top left, it shows you the time of your current broadcast. We're not broadcasting, so it's at zero. But that would show that there would also have a UR or a button there that says link, I think is what it says. And that will give you a, you click on that and it shows you the link to your current show. And it actually also shows you a QR code. So if uh, for whatever reason that was handier than typing in the URL, you could get a QR code of your show and that would show up there. Next up, we have our HDMI in. It would tell us what it's receiving. Of course, it's, again, receiving no signal, so that's set. And then destination is set to stream now. Now, this is a really important thing to know as well. When we get into the, H, uh, into the YouTube settings, I'll show you how this whole thing works. But effectively, when you're in YouTube, you can, either, you can choose to either stream to your stream now, which is just your kind of generic, ready to go anytime live streaming page, or you can stream to an existing show, something you set up in advance. And we'll take a look at how to set that up on the computer and then how that would configure over here as well. Next up, you have the account that you're connected to. You see it says Photo Joseph, that's my YouTube account. And to the right of that, this little red button allows you to switch between streaming to YouTube or streaming to Facebook. We're gonna stick with YouTube right now, but the configuration options are gonna be pretty much the same. And it connects to that and off we go. Now, if you've never connected to your network before, to your YouTube channel before, then what it'll do the first time you connect is it's gonna be very, very simple. It pops up a screen that says, go to google.com slash device on another device. So you get your iPhone, you get your laptop, whatever. Go to google.com slash device and immediately it's gonna pop up. Well, it's gonna ask you to log into your account if you're not already logged in. And it's gonna say, enter the code. And the Epifan will be posting at this point a code that you just type in. You type it in, it only takes a few seconds. They find each other across the worldwide internet and boom, you're connected and that's it. It really couldn't be easier. You're not required to log into your YouTube account 
on the webcaster, which is great because you have to type in the URL with the soft, the password of the soft keyboard, and we'll show you that when we get to it. Um, but it's really easy to do. You just say connect to YouTube. It says go to this URL, type in this number. You do that, and you're connected. It's pretty slick. It's a really nice setup there. I like that a lot. All right, next up, let's see here. That's how we connect. So down here we have start. That'll start the stream, but we're not ready to go there yet. Unpair, so that will disconnect from my current YouTube account. Don't want to click that, but if you wanted to, that's what you would do. And then there's the preferences and the settings. Now, when we go into the settings, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff that is not necessarily all actually active. So this device is running Android. It's running, I'm sure, a modified version, but it is largely stock, meaning that there's a lot of controls that Android provides, a lot of software that Android provides that is not disabled in the UI. So you see things in here that you can't actually use. It's a little odd, and i got to be honest, I wish that Epifan could go in and clean this up a little bit, and I don't know anything about Android. Maybe you can't do that, but there are buttons in here that you would think, oh, wow, the device has that, but it doesn't. So let me just show you what you can do in here. So you see at the top, you've got Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Both of those work. If I click on Wi-Fi, it'll allow me to enable or disable Wi-Fi. So if I click this box, it just turns it off. If I turn it back on, it will connect to whatever Wi-Fi networks are available. So it's currently turning it on. It sees them. Now, Photo Joseph guessed it has connected to that already because I connected to it in the past. So it has saved that. Here's another network, Photo Joseph. Let's say I wanted to connect to that. I need to type in a password, and this is how you do that. So it brings up a virtual keyboard, a soft keyboard, and now you have to go through here and type in your password using the mouse. You could also connect a physical keyboard to this if you wanted to. That works as well, but if you don't want to carry that around, then that's how you do that. Let's back out of the Wi-Fi settings and go into Ethernet. There's really nothing to do in here except to turn it on or off. And once it's connected, it'll take a few minutes, but once it's connected, it will connect to your local Wi-Fi network, uh, your local Ethernet network, and that's where all the settings will be. Then you find Bluetooth, but there is no Bluetooth. You can turn it on, but there is no Bluetooth. So this isn't going to do anything, so don't even bother. That's just It's one of those things that's there. It shows it there, but it doesn't actually do anything. Data usage it, uh, apparently does show your report how much data you are using out, so that's good to know. If you want it over Wi-Fi or over Ethernet, you can see what you have been broadcasting, so you see how much data you've been using. Let's see, if we click on more, I don't think we're going to get anything under here. Yep, tethering portal, none of this stuff is activated here, so just don't bother. It really is just about the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet. You're going to find things like under device, under USB, connect to PC. Again, it doesn't do anything. A lot of these controls don't actually do anything in here. Now, one exception is display. When you go to, sp to display mode and you scroll down to the bottom here, there is an HDMI mode, and you can switch in here what your HDMI output is going to be. Now, this is a little bit curious. It's, it, it works, but it doesn't, and I don't know. It just might just be my setup. So right now it's set to 1920 by 1080 at 24p, which I should therefore be able to connect to my ATEM switcher, which for those of you who've seen the show before might know that's how I'm doing all this broadcast. Everything, every single going into my ATEM has to be 1920 by 1080 at 24p exactly, or it won't show up. I set it to that and I plugged it in, but the ATEM doesn't see it. I'm Right now, the way that you're able to see this is I'm plugging it into a scaler that I use from a company called a Decimator. But the decimator is actually reporting that it is getting in 1920 by 1080 at 24p. So I'm not quite sure why my ATEM isn't seeing it. Interesting point, but you can actually switch the interface in there. So if you're looking at this and uh, for whatever reason you've got a television that won't connect at 1080, you want to do it at 720 by uh, 1280 by 720, you can switch that in here and this does actually switch. Or just leave it on auto and right now the screen's going to refresh and it comes right back and we're good to go. Interestingly, now that I've set it to auto, when I look at the decimator, it tells me that it's getting 1080p 60. So that's what it's chosen to send out right now. But again, the 1080p 24 wasn't working with the switcher. Who knows? But it's one of those things that is there if you want to dig into it. You might find other things in here that actually do something. But for the most part, this is all just uh, screen display stuff. You know, you can look around and see if there's anything that works. But there's certainly nothing in here that is critical to your broadcast. Looking under apps, users, all this stuff is just not being used. So just don't bother. Do not bother. Really, all you need to do in here is get into your network settings, enable Wi-Fi and connect to your network, uh, or enable Ethernet, which will be enabled by default, and see if there's anything you have to do in there. Now, to get out of the screen, you right-click. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive. There's no exit. And believe me, the first time you use it, you're going, how do I get out of here? Right-click on your two-button mouse. That takes you out of that screen. All right, let's go back in. 
The next up is the Preferences tab. Now, Preferences is completely customized, so everything in here is actually valid. And this is a lot of really important stuff. So let's start at the top. Streaming details, encoding resolution. Do you want to stream at 1920 by 1080, full HD, 1280 by 720, HD light, 640 by 360, or 320 by 180? I mean, yeah, seriously, if you're streaming live, why you would go that low is beyond me. But I guess if you have to and you've got like a 2G connection, you could do it. I don't know. Don't stream live that way. Go at least 720, preferably 1080. Your audience will appreciate it. So we're going to leave it at 1920 by 1080. Next, you have your video bitrate. Also very, very important. By default, it's going to be, I think, at 2000, but I have the bandwidth, so I want to do it at 4000. Now, you notice the UI here is a little bit where you click on it, and it immediately disappears. So you're going, well, wait, did it actually select it? You open it up again, and it did. So it's just, it saves you a click, but also it adds a click if you want to confirm it. So video bitrate is now set to 4000, 4000 kilobit, 4 megabit. You can also enable the USB camera. Now, this is currently, as of this recording, in beta. Of course, at some point, maybe when you're watching this, it'll be out of beta. But this allows you to hook up a second camera. Plug that in, and off you go. Now, I haven't experimented with this yet, so this is something for another show. But you can hook up a second camera in there, and then presumably, somewhere along the way, you can actually do a camera switch. You know what? I think it's time to test this out. Let's find out if this works. Boom. And just like that, we got a USB mic. So let's go back in here and turn this on enable, it says USB camera not detected. Oh, well, I guess I better connect it first. Okay, well then let's just go back into a little close up here and let me take this USB camera and I'm gonna use this port on the back here. Let's plug that into there. Find the right direction to plug that into. Excellent. So we got our nice little Logitech webcam there. Let's go back into the interface and, uh, oh, and reboot your webcaster. All right, well, I guess we have to reboot the webcaster. So to do that, we're gonna do that the old fashioned way. Let's try the power button. Let's see if the power button actually does anything this time. I just push it once. You know, nothing happens. Push and hold it. It's flashing. It's actually rebooting. I think it might be trying to stream. Huh. That would be bad. Let's just unplug it and plug it back in. I don't really know about this power button thing. So we're going to plug that back in, let it boot up. I am watching for that screen to come up. And once it does, I will share it with you. Here we go. It is booting up, and it looks like we're good to go. All right, HDMI in, no signal, as before, as expected. Now, how about that USB camera? Right, let's go back into the preferences and enable that. The feature is only available when you have a USB camera connected. Well, it did connect one. Hmm. All right, well, let's try again, shall we? We've got a different port. Maybe we'll try the different port. Let's uh, unplug the little transmitter, unplug the camera, let's plug the camera into that port on the side. I don't know, they didn't tell me there's any difference between the ports, but this is how we're going to find out. Plug that in, let's see, do I still have mouse control? I do, let's, uh, well, let's just reboot it. So, again, the old-fashioned way of rebooting, we're just going to unplug that guy, plug that back in, and let's go back to that screen. And here she's booting up, Epifan Video, Webcaster X2, works with Facebook Live and the YouTube. And it is, let's see here, let's see if that's working. Let's go to preferences again. Enable USB camera beta, click that. Aha, it worked that time. So it does matter what port you're in. All right, well, that's very, very good to know. If you want to plug this in, don't use the back ports. Maybe the other one works, I don't know, but the side one does, so good to know. Now, keep in mind, this is in beta, so this could absolutely change in the future, but that's the way it is now. All right, back to the screen. So I've enabled that, right-click to get out of here. And now how do I switch cameras? HDMI? No. Oh, okay, well this just suddenly came up. So interesting. So this is a picture-in-picture. -picture. Let's go back into preferences, see if we have anything over this USB camera. Hmm, I don't see anything else in there. USB source resolution, let's see what that is. Well, this can be full 1080 because that camera is a 1080p camera. Switch inputs tab. Aha, multi-source. Here we go. Multi-source enabled, space, switch inputs tab, layouts. Ah, picture in picture, twin side by side. All right, let's try that. Exit here. Okay, there we go. So again, we don't have the input coming into there because that would be, that would be inception. That wouldn't work. Um, but... That is certainly interesting. So we have that. So now it would appear that you do have to have a keyboard installed, connected, to control that. Let me try that.
All right, now we've got a keyboard in here. Now I will say, this is obviously wired. Um, I could not use an Apple mouse, wired mouse with this before. That's why I had to buy this. It just didn't work. And I don't remember now if the keyboard did or didn't, but we're gonna find out, aren't we? I'm kind of hoping it's not gonna tell me to reboot it again, although that does bring up, that does sound familiar as well. Let's go back to the screen here. So if I hit this, oh, look at that, Spacebar is doing it. So Spacebar is toggling between the PMP, the side-by-side -side, and the full screen. And then Tab does a swap. So let's go back into the preferences here and scroll down to those USB settings. Where were they? Multi-source, here we go. So Space enables it, excellent. Switch inputs tab is set. USB source resolution is set. Layouts, let's do a different layout. Let's go for a picture in picture, right top, all right? And then there's some padding none thin or wide, and you got home end button, changes that. Okay, so I gotta remember home and end, transparency, page up, page down, all these controls. And then there's a transition as well. Transition, fast, medium, slow, let's do a fast transition. All right, so let's see what happens here. So if I hit the space bar, it enables that, and disables it, there's the transition. If I do the home button or end button, that's interesting, it's just kind of moving it around slightly, or is it growing it? Or tell us, let's, uh, Hit the tab to swap that. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to do. It's just kind of moving it a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Not sure about that. And then page up, page down changes transparency. So if you want to have a slightly transparent picture, you can. All right. Well, hey, you know, it works. As advertised, it does work. You get that second camera. So it's good to know. Let's see. I think if you really wanted to use it as a two camera, let, let's set that up because that would be the most useful. So let's go in here back into the preferences. And let's see, where were we? I gotta scroll down to multi-source. Multi-source enabled, switch inputs is tab. Uh, layouts, I, I don't wanna do, I just want full screen overlap. There we go, I think that's what I'm gonna want. And let's not do a transition, because transitions are just boring, so let's just turn that off. And uh, transparency we have, picture in picture, oh, padding, that's what the home end was, was the padding. Picture and picture size, oh, plus and minus, I missed that. Okay, well, that's okay. So now, as I hit the tab, it switches between the two. There you go. So there you have true multi-camera input that way. Now, keep in mind, I have just connected a webcam, but you could, in theory, connect a full-on secondary proper camera, uh, whether that's a DSLR mirrorless camera or a big black magic camera, whatever it might be, because you can buy an HDMI to USB converter. Epifan makes one. So if, in theory, if you took a DSLR, HDMI out into an HDMI to USB converter, USB into this, you should get two complete full quality inputs. It's good to know. Very good to know. Alrighty. Now, audio. Hmm, what's gonna happen with audio in here? Let's see if there's anything in here about the audio setup. So let's, uh, I guess we could point this off to, where are we gonna point this? I feel like I wanna point this somewhere cool. Yeah, maybe we should just switch out of that and not have that up on screen. Let's go into the preferences and see if there's anything in there about audio. Because that is a very, very good question. Where is the audio going to come from? I don't see anything in here. Well, that is something I'm going to have to find out and add a comment on later. So by the time you're watching this, hopefully I'll have an answer for you. You will need to scroll down and look for the first pinned comment. The pinned comment will be the one that explains where the audio is coming from. Hopefully, especially since it doesn't have support yet for the audio inputs, it's probably going to switch audio sources, which would not be good, or it's going to have both live at the same time. Well, I'm just going to have to find out and I will let you know. That I think is about it. Let's just go back in here real quick, see if there's anything else worth looking at. Um, oh yes, of course, we haven't finished looking through all these settings in here. So we were at encoding resolution, video bitrate, enable USB, we did that. <clears throat> now we come to published destination. Aha, very, very important stuff. So let me clear some space on my work desk here. Published destination, do you go to stream now or a future show that is set up? So I have a show set up right there. And this is a really important part of choosing how you're doing your streaming. So let's, uh, let's head over to YouTube on my computer here real quick. We'll open up Chrome and let's go full screen on this. You can see what's happening. I'm going to go to my live events page. And one thing that's interesting you're going to see here is that, let's get the right screen up. Not both of these events were showing up in there, which I'm not sure why. But here's Stream Now. So if I go to my Stream Now page, I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. If I go to my Stream Now, this is just a basic general, I can stream at any time. So this is really useful if you want to be able to just 
go live. I don't want to do any setup. I just want to go live. That's what StreamNow is all about. And this device supports that. But for most people, I think most part, for the most part, people are going to want to schedule a stream in advance. That way you can build an audience. You can promote it. You can say, here's a link to watch my video because the video is built in advance. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. I've done this before, but if you're new to this whole thing, let me just show it to you real quick here. So let's go back to the computer. Let's go back to the events page. And I'm going to go click on create new event, new live event. And I'll say, this is the X2. And I'll say today at 1 p.m. And I can put in a description here. I can put in keywords, tagging tools, all kinds of stuff. You want to make sure you set this privacy properly. So let's set that to public. And you can go into your advanced settings and you can choose when you want to promote this. When you want to promote, promote it when the event is live, an hour before, or so on. I'm going to say when the event is live right now because I'm not actually going to take it live. And I don't want anybody who follows my channel to think that a show is about to come up that isn't. You can also go down here and choose your latency, normal latency or low latency. So in theory, normal latency will give you a slightly better quality playback. Low latency means that it is closer to real time. Now, don't fool yourself. Neither of them are real time, but it is closer to real time. It's less of a delay. So I personally, I always put it on low latency because I want to have interaction with my live audience as close to real time as possible. That's pretty much all you have to do. Then you click on create event. If you want to, you can go in here and uh, and create a uh, you can create a graphic for it and upload that. If this this part of the page takes a moment. It's there's no progress bar, but it is actually doing something. You just have to wait and be oh there we go. It's done. You can create your own custom graphic. If you don't, it's just going to use your main art for your page. And then you do have to set this basic ingestion bit rate. Now we're going to go 1080p at four megabit. So right fits right in here between 3000 and 6000. So we put that there. This selecting your encoder, this is irrelevant. You don't actually, it doesn't matter what you set this to. So you just leave it at that. Or if you want to choose other encoders and see what your, your streaming URLs would be, that's all there, but we don't need that. And by the way, none of those URLs will do you any good because this show is going to disappear by the time you see that. And then you can go to view on watch page, or more likely what you're going to want to do is go to your control room. Now, from the control room, you have a whole lot of control, and this is a very important part of this. So let's talk about that for a moment. Within the control room, you have the ability to set up your stream so that it goes from your device to YouTube, but not live quite yet. So you can preview things on the page. And that's the next part of the settings. This is really, really important. So let's get back in here to the settings. Publish destination, I now should be able to see that new event. Now, it's not showing up there, so let's just exit out of here for a moment, go back into the preferences, and click on publish destination again, and there it is. This is the X2. Okay, so it refreshes that when you load that page. So that's what I'm going to do. You can say use title from the YouTube live dashboard. Uh, it, this is saying, I think that if you're going to, if you have a YouTube live stream now, it's gonna, I don't really know what that means. You've got your own title. Ignore that. Video title stream now only. So now if you are doing the stream now, so that's one where you don't have the event set up, your stream has to have a name. What's it going to be called? Well, this is where you change that. So I go in here and I can click on this, go in here and you can type in whatever title you want. So again, you're going to be typing it in the hard way, but you can type in whatever you want and that will become the title for your show. Privacy, again, for stream now only. Is it private, public, or unlisted? So you can choose that in there too. But we are not using stream now, so it doesn't matter. We're using this, publishing this to the This is the X2 stream. Show comments, whether you want to have the comments showing up on your interface. And so off, left, or right, so off is off. Left or right just tells you what side of the screen it's going to be. So they're going to show up on top of your video on the left or right side of this screen. So yet another reason to have the monitor on there. Very, very useful. Use YouTube to preview. Now, this is the really, really important one that I was talking about. When you enable this, use YouTube to preview before going live. So you turn that on or off. Once you hit go live, if you have this enabled, the device will start streaming to YouTube. You will be able to preview the YouTube stream over here. So if I go into, in fact, let's just, let's just do it because it's, it's public, it's private. I set it to public. I think we're going to be okay with this. All right, let's go back into here. It is set to the right event. Let's exit out of here and I'm going to hit start. And it is going to, there we go, destination. This is the X2. It shows how many people are watching. Nobody's watching it because I haven't actually taken it live yet. So there's no indication here that it's actually not live. So you, you do have to be aware. Here's that URL button I was telling you about. You click on that, it tells you the, the URL for that YouTube stream and of course the QR code I mentioned. So now let's go back to my desktop and you'll see over here on my computer, it says stream status is good. It's got the stream, it's good. It's good to go. So if I click preview, it says, are you sure you want to preview it? Yes, I'm still not public, so that's okay. We're going to preview that. Now we got to wait for a moment. It's going to say start streaming. 
Let's give this a moment to do its things. It says, we are preparing your live stream preview. Please wait a moment. So we'll wait for that. We'll wait for that. We wait for that. There we go. And now I'm going to click play on the preview. Now I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes when you click this, it just says error. And if it does say error, just refresh the page. But in this case, it worked. So now there is the live stream. Now remember, I don't have a signal going in, but if I hit tab, it should switch over to the other monitor, which it has. But now we're going to see how much of a delay there is because let's just push this up into the picture in picture corner because I have just tabbed over to this display. If we look at what this device is showing, it is showing that. Look, there's me. Haha. -ha. But if we go back to the Mac screen, there it goes. It just came on. So there's, I don't know what that was. I wasn't counting, probably 30 seconds or so. But there's the display. So we're live. I mean, we're not live. We're in preview mode, but we're ready to be live. So this tells us, out the way here, this tells us that we are now ready to go live. So this is the really important part of this. So if I go back to, let's just look at the screen and cancel out of that one. You see that? Scroll down here. Here's my public view. Let's see what the public is seeing right now. The public right now is not going to see the stream. It tells you that I'm going to be going live soon. You see, it tells you what the countdown is to when I scheduled it to go live. Here's the live chat that I've got. But if I'm ready to go live, now I click on here. I click start streaming and it's going to pop up one more dialogue. Are you sure you want to? Click OK and it will be live. Of course, I don't actually want to do any of that, so I'm not going to. But that's how you do that. That's an important part of it. It's important to know that you can go live in two stages, and I highly, highly recommend that. This allows you to stream your preview for a while. You can stream it for a few minutes or a half hour or whatever you want beforehand, just to ensure that your signal is clean and strong. This allows you to make sure that the picture looks good. It allows you to make sure that your video and audio is in sync. It allows you to check everything. If you're going to be switching cameras, making sure that works, Check it all before you actually go live. It's a very, very good thing to have. So I highly recommend that you do that. All right, let me, uh, let's get out of this inception mode here. And so one live viewer, that's me. That's me, though. I'm the one watching that. Go back to the preferences and see what else is in here. So as we scroll down, we looked at uh, use YouTube for preview, which is enabled. Pair automatically after reboot. This you want to leave on because that's going to connect to YouTube or Facebook automatically. Not start streaming, just connect. So do that. This I highly recommend you don't turn on. Start streaming automatically after pairing. Now, I suppose if you were doing the kind of thing where you wanted to just plug in your X2 and within a couple minutes be online, no, touching nothing else, just plug it in, sit back and wait for the show to start. You could do that. You would set it to go to your Live Now page, set it to connect automatically and stream automatically. And then as soon as it boots up, it just goes live. I definitely don't recommend that, but there might be a use case where you want to do that. So if you want to, you can do it. Stream automatically after pairing. Let's leave that off. So there's the multi-source stuff. We already looked at all that, so that's all enabled. And then down at the bottom here, admin re reset to factory defaults. And that's basically all there is to it. Pretty straightforward device. So again, just to recap, when you first turn it on and plug in your, your network connection, your Ethernet connection, or connect it to wireless, it is going to ask you to connect to YouTube You go or Facebook if you're doing Facebook. You just follow the prompts on there really easy. Choose the show that you want to go to. Don't forget to change your resolution. Don't forget to change your bit rate so that it matches what you want and what your internet uh, channel can support. And by the way, you want to have... I've heard, you know, 50%, 100%. I would say ideally have double the bandwidth needed. So if you want to stream 4K, have it 8K upstream. Just that's my recommendation. If you don't have it, you can try it, obviously. But um, there's always other things going on in your network. Don't don't try to, to over limit it. Don't try to push it. Um, get yourself a wireless mouse with a little USB dongle thing so that you can control this. You do have to carry, make sure you carry an HDMI cable with you, two HDMI cables, one from your camera to the device and another one from your device to your television or whatever you're connecting to so that you can see what's happening. And that's about it. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. That is how you configure your X2. See you next time. Bye-bye. Hey again, quick little insert here. I had a viewer ask about Facebook Live setup on the X2, and that, that's totally fair. I've only shown how to do it on YouTube, so I figured while I'm making this video, I'll just add in a quick little bit to the end explaining how to do it on Facebook. We're just going to try it. I haven't done it before, so let's do it right now. So switch over to the uh, back to the X2 screen. Remember, I can exit where I am by clicking this red arrow on the top right. And it now says, where do you want to stream? So I'll go ahead and click on Facebook for the first time. All right, so it says, pair with your account, go to this URL and type that in. Well, that couldn't possibly be any easier, could it? So let's go ahead and I will uh, let me get that loaded on my page here and then we'll bring that up for you to see. And here's what it looks like over on facebook.com slash device. There's my code. I've just typed it in. I spared you the 
would spare you the time watching that. I'll click continue and that's it. It's already connected. That was it. It just kind of went away and now we're connected. It says Facebook Live down there. All right, so there's the unpair. So I guess it'll be the same thing as clicking this. Although I wonder if this will allow me to switch back and forth. Let's see if it'll retain my YouTube connection. Let's see, Photo Joseph, yes. And if I switch back to Facebook, will it retain that connection? And it does. That's very cool. Now let's go down to the preferences and take a look at our settings in here. So encoding resolution, Facebook is limited to 1280 by 720. So the settings here match that. That's very good. Let's see what the bitrate shows. Up to 4000K bitrate. That's excellent. So we can go that high. Um, I've disabled the camera for now. Let's see, publishing destination. All right. So you can choose straight to your timeline or to any of your business pages or events that you have created. Wow, these are all very old events. That's funny that those show up in there. But I could go straight to my business page, my Photo Joseph Studios page. Excellent. Go in here to change the title, and off we go. So title, video description, privacy, show comments, continuous stream. Continuous stream. Oh, I think that's a Facebook feature where you can just have an ongoing stream, I think. I'm not actually sure. I think it's a Facebook feature you can take advantage of. So just as like a permanent, full-time, always going. YouTube has that as well. I don't recall seeing that in YouTube settings. Well, anyway, so you've got that. Uh, delete post after stop for continuous streams only. Okay, pair automatically after reboot. We talked about those settings before. All right, so one thing I'm not seeing, I wonder, so this shows the page. I wonder if I create an actual event in Facebook. Let, let's find out. I'm gonna, let's bring this up here. And I'm gonna go into my Facebook settings. And I don't remember where these settings are. Let me see if I can find these. You've got this thing called the live dashboard, which I've bookmarked. I think you go to your page and then under videos, video library, it looks like, and then view insights are plus live. Let's go plus live. Let's create a live event. And there's the URL for that. So if you're streaming using a system that you have to enter everything manually, you've got that there. Let's go next. We're going to call this video title. We're going to call this, this is an X2 test. And it says it's offline. That's fine. Is there anything I need to set in here? That's an embed code. Um, I guess that's it. Let's see here. Schedule live. Excellent. Let's schedule this for later today. Let's, um, it's going to put this for 11 o'clock because I don't want this to show up on anybody's feed. 11 o'clock. I can add my custom image and click schedule. And that is thinking, okay, that is now created. So now let's go back over to the X2 screen. And I know from the from experience, I do have to back out of the screen. So let's back out of that, go back into the preferences, and go to publishing destination. And let's see if we can find that event. So where are we? Oops. Things you can do. All these events in here that are not things I scheduled anytime recently. I don't even know what those events are. That is so weird. Some really old stuff in there. Page group. So I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the actual, let me back out of here again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it a chance to kind of rethink about things. Let's switch over back to YouTube and switch over back to Facebook. And I want to see if I can find that event in there. Preferences, publishing destination, timeline, page, group, event. These, these events are calendar events. These are not video events. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom. So it looks like maybe not. So it appears that I cannot actually access a pre-built show. Well, I'll confirm that. I'm going to find out for you and I will confirm that. And uh, again, just like with the audio thing, if, uh, if you scroll down and look for a pinned comment, I will include that info in the comments there. All right. Well, that's it. I, some people want to see how the Facebook connection worked, and that's it. It's just like YouTube. You just click connect. It says go to facebook.com slash device, type in that code, and that's it. You're connected. Just don't forget to go in and change your settings, and you're good to go. Thanks, guys.